Hey, what's up everybody? I wanted to make this video because I feel like this is a topic that's not really discussed as much as it should be. Math is the least liked subject in middle school, high school, and even at some colleges. And just to be clear before we start, everybody's brain is wired a little bit differently. Like me, for example, I learn a lot more through videos rather than through reading. So it's important to understand that not everybody is a math person and that's okay. However, every single person can get better at math through practice just like any other skill. If you get a little nervous when you see a math problem with a lot of variables and symbols, just know that you're not alone. If you're anything like me, math was one of the most difficult subjects in high school. I forced myself to do a lot of worksheets after school and sooner or later I got the hang of it and now I love it and do it for a living. In this video, I'm gonna share five tips to get better at math and hopefully by the end of this video, you'll like it a little bit more. If you like the video and you're new here, consider subscribing and smashing that like button for the good old YouTube. The first tip is to treat math like it's any other skill and it gets easier with practice. Once you start treating math like it's a skill, it'll be a lot easier to have an open mind about new concepts and also treating it like a skill will give you a better perspective. And like any other skill, the only way to get better is through practice. Of course, the learning curve is super steep and that's why in your earlier years of math, you're really just focused on the multiplication tables and mastering the number line. If you're in school right now, you can practice just by paying attention in class, doing homework, and if you have time, doing extra problems when you're at home. If you're out of school and just want to become better at math, start by using the calculator less. Try to calculate the tip just using your head. Or if you're really motivated, I link some practice PDFs in the description below for the SAT. It might give you flashbacks, I'm sorry, but I mean, there's a resource for you. I also do a lot of math problems on my TikTok, so whenever you're bored, uh, there's another resource for you. Okay, so tip number two is when you're given a tough problem, write down what you know. Math has this sort of thing where you think you understand something in class, you get home, look at the homework, and it's a lot harder than what was taught. This happens all the time, and as somebody in college, it does not go away, they just keep doing that. They do this for a reason, and they really wanna stretch your problem-solving skills. That's why breaking up a problem into smaller pieces and solving what you know is one of the best problem-solving techniques you can do. Let's say you're given a problem like this. So here we have a geometry problem, and a problem like this is most likely to show up in high school at some time as like an SAT problem, but regardless of whether you think it's really easy or really hard, the most important thing is the problem-solving technique. So the first thing is to write down what we already know. And if you don't know much about geometry, one really important thing to know is that in any straight line, all of the angles are gonna add up to 180 degrees. So we know that right off the bat, that this is a straight line and all of its angles must add up to 180 degrees. And also this symbol here signifies that this angle is a right angle, so it must equal 90 degrees. So now that we wrote down everything that we know, we can start doing some real math. Since this whole line adds up to 180 degrees and 90 degrees is already taken up here by this right angle, that means that all of these A's must add up to 90 degrees. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six A's, and they all have to add up to 90 degrees. So just by adding up like terms, we get that 6a is equal to 90. And if we divide both sides by 6, we get that a is equal to 15. But this is where most people get the problem wrong because it's asking for the value of 2a and not just a. So what we'd have to do is just multiply both sides by 2 and we get that 2a is equal to 30. So the answer is d. But like I said, this problem itself isn't important. What truly is, is the idea that writing down what you already know can greatly simplify a problem and get you in the right direction when you're stuck. Okay, for the third tip, and you're gonna hate me for this one, I'm sorry, but do not cheat on your math homework. This is one of the things that I learned from personal experience and I realized right away that it's the worst way to go. If you start to cheat, like I said, math builds upon itself. So once you start cheating, then it'll be harder to stop because you don't know what's going on and then you're just gonna keep cheating and it's gonna be a whole mess. Doing your own homework is super important because math isn't just about being good with numbers, but it's about being a good problem solver. If you're really stuck on a problem, I'm gonna talk about some great resources later on in the video, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so math tip number four is if you're in a school setting, it's really important to redo the problems you get wrong. Whether it's a test, quiz, homework, you name it, the most efficient way to study is by correcting your past mistakes. Sure, you might not be able to get those extra points back, but if you get something wrong on the homework, it's really important to correct your mistakes so you don't get the same problem wrong on the test. This also helps because it allows you to study more efficiently. Since you're putting more focus on your weaker topics rather than the ones you already got correct, you can make the most out of your time and inevitably score higher on your math test. Okay, so tip number five is to use your resources at your disposal. I know in high school it might be hard to ask your teacher a question because you're too worried about what other people think or your math teacher is just mean, like I get that. But when you can, it's important to ask somebody for help. Because if you're anything like me and start to get a little confused, it's harder to stay focused. So it's important to ask for help right when you get stuck. That's the one thing I like about college. If you ask a question, nobody's really gonna make fun of you. And more times than not, people probably have the same question that you do, but they're too afraid to ask. Luckily, if you don't have a teacher, parent, peer, whatever, there's a lot of free online resources that can help. Wolfram Alpha, Integral Calculator, and Symbol Lab are just a few of these online resources that you can use that are free. These are great for helping you check your work, or if you're really stuck on a problem, it'll help you get started, but please don't take advantage of it. Like I said, math gets easier with practice, so if you're just Googling to get the answers, it's 
really gonna hurt you in the long run. The resources are there for a reason, so use them as a tool and not as a cheat sheet. Another cool thing that you can do to improve your understanding is after you use the resource, try to cover up the answer and try to do it yourself to see if you really understand. So that's it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed, and if you're new here, consider subscribing and smashing that like button. If you have any questions, the comment section is right open for you. You can check out my TikTok if you want. I have a lot of videos explaining simple SAT problems and everything in between. Have a great rest of your day and see you in the next one.